In the previous video, we learned about query invalidation, which is useful when you have to mutate remote data that affects the UI. For example, posting a hero and refetching the list of heroes to ensure the UI is in sync with the remote data. So if we add a new hero, green arrow, Oliver Queen, In the network tab, you can see that we have a post request followed by a get request. Although this works perfectly fine, there is room for improvement. If I click on the post request, you can see in the response, we have the new hero object being returned. It is pretty common for the new object to be automatically returned in the response of the mutation. So instead of refetching a query for this item and wasting a network call for data that we already have, we can take advantage of the object returned by the mutation function and immediately update the existing query with the new data. In similar words, we can use the add superhero mutation response to update the superhero's query data, thereby saving an additional network request. Let's see how to do that in this video. Step one, we comment out the query invalidation line as we don't want the additional network request. Step two, we now make use of the data returned from mutation. So on success now receives data as a parameter. In our case, data refers to the entire response for the post request. Step three, on the query client instance, we call a method called setQueryData. This function is used to update the query cache. The first argument is the query key. We want to update superhero's query, so that is going to be our key. The second argument is a function. This function automatically receives the old query data as an argument. Old query data here refers to what is present in the query cache. If we take a look at the dev tools, you can see it is an object with data, status, status text, etc. From this function, we need to return the new value for the query cache pertaining to superheroes. For that, we make use of this old query data along with the data received from the mutation. First, return an object. Inside the object, spread out the old query data. All we have to change is the data property. So specify data and we are going to append the mutation hero data to the end of the existing array of heroes. So dot 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 spread old query data dot data and then we append the mutation response, so data dot data. To avoid any confusion you might have, old query dot data refers to the array of superheroes you see here in DevTools. Data dot data refers to the hero object from the mutation response. Let's save the file and test this out. Refresh. Clear the network tab and enter Catwoman and Selena Kyle. When I click add hero, the list updates, but we don't see an additional network request in the network tab. We have 200 from before, 201, which is the mutation and 204, which is a pre-flight request but there is no get request after the mutation. If you take a look at our dev tools, you can see we have Catwoman in the list of heroes. 
So this is how you handle a mutation response. A little more verbose than query invalidation, but it saves you the additional network request. Now it's also possible for you to take this one step further by making use of optimistic updates. Let's take a look at that in the next video. Thank you all for watching. Please do make sure to subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one.